How to play the Malians in 8 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I get it. The Malians, not the Malians. Are you happy now? Ah, uh, Mali. Land of gold and salt. You know them for Mons Musa's economic hit job of a pilgrimage, and I know them for their insane passive resource generation, dummy amounts of unit spamming, and far and away the most annoying cavalry in the game. You know, props to the devs for even adding an African Civ to the game, by the way. Medieval Europe has honestly been feeling a little bit stale. We want more African Civs! As the only sub-Saharan African civilization right now, the Malians play like no one else, with tons of unique units, mechanics, and bullshit to match. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. And remember, if you like this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps the channel out and it makes me feel a lot better about spending all this time making these guides. All right, without further ado, let's start. In the beginning. Build order. Like most things with this faction, Molly's opening is very unconventional. Number one, immediately queue up as many villagers as you can and rally your TC to sheep. Number two, send all your vills to the nearest straggler tree, then shift queue to sheep. Number three, quickly grab one vill and build a pit mine on your gold. Pit mines are unique Mollyan structures that generate gold automatically. And we can actually increase the amount of gold generation by making use of Molly's unique influence system. Simply build houses around the pit mine to increase the gold that it'll generate. And that's why we're cutting down that tree. We're gonna use all that wood to set up six houses around our pit mine. Number four, make sure your scout is not idle. You're gonna have to drop off at least one sheep back home or else we'll run out of food before we can age up. And number five, once you've finished building all of your houses, this villager can now go join his compatriots on food. You're aiming to have about 10 to 12 villagers on food. Everyone else after that will get rallied to wood. As Molly, we won't need to mine any gold in the dark age since our pit mine auto generates all the gold that we need. When it's time, grab four bills and build the Monsecori landmark. All this does is generate even more gold for you. We're gonna send all of your other bills to gather wood, but remember to leave exactly four bills on food. Four bills on food is all you need to sustain constant villager production. Now, before we move on to this next phase, I need you to understand that what I'm about to show you some consider to be unnatural. We're entering the dark side of the force, and I'm not just saying that because they're black. It's bullshit in the most literal sense. It's time to learn the Malian Cowboo. You see, Molly has access to this unique economic unit known as cattle. They're kind of like giga sheep. They can be hard harvested for food really quickly, or they can be stored in ranches where they'll passively generate food for you. Are you starting to see a trend with this sieve yet? Ranches cost a ton of wood, and cows cost a ton of gold, so we'll need to heavily macro for those two resources in particular. First, let's secure some more free gold. With each age up, Molly can build an additional pit mine, so- What are you waiting for? Next, since cows are produced from mills, I like to set up two mills, one next to my berries in case I ever go for those, and one next to my town center where it's nice and safe. These two mills function as a poor man's second town center, but trust, a full cow boom can easily outpace whatever the hell your opponent's trying to do over there, especially when we set up the Grand Fulani Corral. This thing doubles the food output of all nearby cows, and if you manage to get to this stage untouched, it's basically GG. Remember, when you're aging up, you'll want about 10 to 12 villagers building this thing since you want this thing up ASAP. So far, so good. But in a real game, no opponent's gonna let you get away with this for free, so it's time to talk Military. To defend your cow boom, Molly has one of the best early game comps available. Donzos plus javelin throwers. Donzos are unique Molly and spearmen that also chuck a spear before they charge. And javelin throwers are a unique unit that basically replaces the horsemen for Molly. Like the skirmishers of AoE 2, javelin throwers counter all ranged units, and their high damage also makes them pretty decent against early armored units. But watch out, high damage and low attack speed means this unit is really prone to overkilling. This is especially bad in the late game where we have a ton of these guys just throwing all their DPS away. But that's okay because once we get to the mid game, we're going to be transitioning to an entirely different comp, the Sofa Archer Span. Sofas are Malian knights that are weaker than normal knights, but they make up for by being way cheaper and way faster. And while sofas are technically available in the Feudal Age, they don't really come to their own until the Castle Age thanks to the imported armor tech, which makes them way tankier than they have any right to be. Malian scouts can also be upgraded to warrior scouts, which are another insanely cheap, spammable, fast-moving cavalry unit. Together, Malian cavalry are like a swarm of locusts rampaging across farms, tearing down everything in their wake. Cancer. Your opponent will have no choice but to spam spears, but thankfully the Malians have the perfect answer to that too. You see, Malian archers aren't like the other girls either. In the Castle Age, they unlock the ability to shoot purple drink directly into your enemy's veins. Oh, mm, it's purple. Each poison arrow will deal 3 damage over time, and this damage can't be mitigated by armor, and it can stack infinitely. This means a mass of Malian archers can kill just about anything, Stop. even fully no. armored knights. Just stop it. Lastly, I want to give a shout out to the Musafati. These gals are basically melee crossbows, but seeing as they're unarmored and therefore super susceptible to archer fire, they're mostly a situational unit. Similarly, Musafati gunners are better than normal hand cannoneers, but not in any way that actually matters. And yeah, both of these Musafati units can stealth, but that stealth goes away if there's an outpost or a scout in the area, so it's virtually useless. But boy, when you do pull it off, you feel like a badass. Surprise, motherfucker! 
Economy. Like a retired tech bro in his 30s, the Malians are all about passive income, which is awesome because this means you'll have a lot more pop space for your spam. A fully stacked cow boom is basically equivalent to having 30 villagers farming for you, and it's virtually unraidable. Or rather, if you do lose your cows, you should probably surrender already. A fully stacked pit mine is roughly equivalent to 3 villagers permanently mining gold, or 4 villagers if you manage to secure a large gold vein. With all this passive income, you almost never see a Malian player go for another TC. Malian villagers work smarter, not harder. Plus, cows still count as econ units, so your post-game graph still looks sexy AF. The one other aspect of your economy I didn't mention is trade. Mali is a great trade Money. faction. Their Money. toll outposts give you bonus resources whenever a trader passes by, so if you do go trade, it's common practice to set up a bunch of toll outposts dotted along your trade line. Base building. Since your cow boom is basically your main win condition, it's crucial that you get it up safely. This means setting up your ranches around your town center like this. If you build them too far out, a single knight could catch you with your pants down and... I'm about to end this man's whole career. Oh, it's just too brutal. I can't watch. As we're setting up our ranches, remember to leave a 4x4 space in the middle where we will plan to place our landmark. As your cows get produced, you can rally them directly to your ranches. And here's a little tip. If you're running low on food, it's totally fine to just eat a couple of your cows. Yeah, boy. Malians gather from cattle super fast, so it's a really great way to hit the food that you need to go up to Castle Age. Here's another tip I bet you didn't know. You don't actually need to finish all of your ranches before placing the landmark. The big cow landmark will give your cows food generation regardless if they're in a ranch or not. See, it's not just jokes on this channel, I also give useful advice, sometimes. Oh, and be sure to set up walls and outposts near your vulnerable resources, especially your gold. As Molly, your units are really gold hungry, so if you get cut off in gold, you're basically out of the game. So overall, remember that in the early game, you're going to be playing very tight and defensive, and then in the late game you're going to be expanding all over the map. Landmarks. In the Feudal Age, both landmarks are technically viable. The Monza Quarry is a gold generator that can also be switched to do stone generation. This is usually the easiest and most brain dead option for you. The Saharan Trade Network will make your traders generate free food when they pass a toll outpost, which means you get even more free resources if you decide to trade. It's also great for defending your base early on. In the Castle Age, the Grand Fulani Corral is the centerpiece of your cow boon strategy. Easily the most important landmark this faction has access to. That being said, the Farimba Garrison is not bad either. It allows you to pump out batches of units quickly and cheaply, and the units only cost Cost gold here. And finally, in the Imperial Age, the Fort of the Huntress is just a keep. Yeah, it has some bullshit stealth mechanic, but you'll never really make use of it. The alternative, the Griatbara, allows you to pay out the ass for global buffs that either increase your farming, you'll never use this one, increase your military production, meh, or increase your unit's siege damage. This one's not terrible. To be honest, it's also a pretty underwhelming landmark, so in most cases it might be even better to get the keep. In general, Molly doesn't have the greatest Imperial Age. Alright, that's it for the Mollians, a very unconventional sieve that I honestly dread playing against. Ugh, I'm low-key debating whether or not it's worth it to release this guide. I do not want to see more Malian players on the ladder. Anyways, that's all from me. Stay frosty, stay chilly.